Hepburn blog is about sources of mortality in the field, and this is based on a project that I've been doing for about 10 months now, where I'm following individual ferns of three different species. So when I say mortality, I don't mean the death of the whole plant. I haven't lost a single plant yet out of about 80 that I've been following. But leaves or fronds do come and go, and fern fronds bite the dust, so to speak. Usually, they seem to get knocked over by things that fall on them from above, like a palm frond might fall out of the canopy and squish a few leaves. And often those leaves do not survive. What I want to show you today when we go out in the field in a few minutes is one particular fern that got flooded between the November and December censuses. And what I'll do is show you what it is doing right now in terms of recovery. When I go out in the field every month, I put one of these color-coded cable ties on the new fronds, and then I also monitor the state of the fronds that have been marked in previous months. So when I went out in for the December census, there had been a flood and the whole fern had been knocked over. Previously, it had had 24 fronds, and they were marked with all these different cable ties from different months, and the whole thing was splatted and lying in the mud. Every month since then, so that would be December, January, February, March, and now we'll go out in April, a couple of new fronds have come up from the base of where the whole thing was knocked over. And in the last census, it's now up to 11 new fronds over the last three or four months. And all of those old ones from previous months before the flood have died. And so, you know, it's back to maybe half strength of what it was back in November. So these ferns are quite able to recuperate and re-sprout and they're very hardy. So let's go take a look at one that had a rough time in November, but seems to be making quite a comeback. So right now we're at about 300 meters on the Trace Rios Trail, and we're maybe 50 or 100 meters away from the Rio Puerto Viejo. So this area floods at least once a year usually. And this is fern number uh, 52, and this was a fern, this is a Diplasium striatastrum, and so it's a riverside fern, and it used to be quite tall and had about 24 fronds. The whole thing fell over in between the November and December censuses in a big flood, and this is the trunk right here. And so the trunk is actually made up of woven together roots, so it's not a trunk in the normal sense of a trunk. But the whole thing fell over, and this right here is where the top of the trunk was, where all the fronds were. And these are all the fronds that died. It got completely splatted and muddy, and these are actually some old tags from previous months. Those fronds have all now died. This was four months ago. And these orange tags are fronds that have sprouted up from the top of the fern in the last three months. And so it's basically regenerating. It's now got 10 fronds. And also what's happened is that it started to sprout from the base. And so what you end up with is a fern here and a fern here. And if we come back in a few months, this trunk might be gone or you won't notice it. And you might think this is two separate ferns, but in fact, it's the same fern that has just regenerated in two different places after a major accident. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe this isn't a normal way for these ferns to deal with floods. If they're up high on this ropey trunk of roots and they get knocked over, Maybe this is a really good strategy for regeneration. If they can grow again from the tip of the trunk and also from the base of the trunk. So it makes for 
kind of a messy project because it's hard to keep track of these things because they seem like they will sprout from anywhere. Um, but it's really uh, a very interesting way of life and maybe it's a special riverside adaptation. So that's one of the things that I'm interested in studying.